Thanks so much for having me here today. It's really exciting to see, Cindy and I were just saying, it's really exciting to see on an early on a Friday so many people here um, because clearly it's a, it's a topic that people are interested in. Um, I'm Tilak, I'm, uh, I lead the home and community team here, uh, research team here at Toronto Rehab, and we try to support older adults and their caregivers living independently in their homes as long as possible. A big piece of that is developing new technologies, new products that we try to commercialize. And today I'm going to try to talk about five of those for you, introduce you to five of those pro uh, products, three of which are available now, two are more of a sneak peek into stuff we're working on that will be available soon. And I'd like to build on, I, I can't imagine a better setup than what Dr. Sinha and Dr. Cameron um, told you about already uh, regarding uh, the challenges that we're talking about here. Um, and I want to build on Louise, who Jill told us about, Dr. Cameron told us about. So imagine that scenario where you have a couple and the husband's just had a stroke and is coming home from the hospital. You know, and, and we've already heard that it's a really stressful time. It's a scary time. There's all these new things that she's, Louise is going to have to learn how to do. She's going to have to get her husband out of bed. And, and in this case, I think it was mainly a communication issue. But often with stroke, we're talking about um, balance issues and mobility issues. Getting Moving around becomes a really big challenge. Getting out of bed becomes a challenge. Getting on and off the toilet becomes a challenge. In and out of the bathtub. Um, Getting out of the house, Dr. Uh, Sinha mentioned, you know, the ordeal of getting someone out of the house every once in a while. Sp thinking now about snow and ice being on the ground, it becomes that much more of a challenge. Um, if you happen to be someone, as you if 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 your uh, care recipient starts to deteriorate over time, at some point you may be at risk of bed sores. So someone who spends a lot of time in bed needs to be repositioned regularly. And that's something that I'm not sure we prepare, um, prepare caregivers uh, for. It, in some cases, we have to reposition people every two hours. How do you manage that over and sleep and do all the other things you have to do? Um, we have to make sure the caregiver stays healthy, that they don't get a back injury. Um, that's one of, you know, uh, the, the care recipient doesn't fall if they have a balance challenge, that they don't fall trying to get in and out of the bathtub. E a fall for the care recipient or a back injury for the caregiver, both of those things can lead to the inability to stay at home um, in the long run. And so we want to prevent all of those things. We want people to be able to get to their doctor's appointments, you know, as shortly, as soon as you transition home, there's probably going to be a whole series of follow-up appointments that you have to get out of the house uh, for. How do you do that if it's icy weather outside? How do you make sure the person you're caring for doesn't slip and fall? Even if it's talking about getting out the front door to the car, it can still be a really big challenge. So I'll take you through some of these, uh, some of the products that we're developing that we try to address some of those problems with. Um, we'll start with falls, and in keeping with the, the, the theme of asking questions of the audience, who, who took the subway to get here today? Anybody? Yeah? What's, what's the first thing you do when you um, get onto the subway and it's standing room only, Andrea? Another question for me. <laughs> If it's standing room only, what do I do? I grab a pole. Yeah, you grab something, right? If you have a balance, if your balance is compromised, you grab onto something. The best way to prevent a fall is giving people lots of things to hang on to. We do that in subways and buses. Why can't we do that at home too? So one of the products our team has developed is a series of poles that you can quickly put up that gives people things to hang on to so that they can move about the house more effectively. These poles are designed so that you don't actually need to screw things into the floor or the ceiling. You, you tighten a nut at the top and it expands between the ceiling and the floor so that it holds itself in place very sturdily. And then you can attach horizontal pieces wherever you need them. So the goal might be to get someone from their bedroom to their bathroom. So you can, someone can have a sturdy hand grip to walk all the way along. Um, it can also be very helpful for helping someone get themselves out of bed. So this gentleman was so proud of the fact that he could independently get himself out of bed into his wheelchair. Um, he has that, you see that green piece of paper above his bed there. That means that he can, he can transfer independently. And th this guy was incredibly proud of that fact because the hospital he came from before he came to Toronto Rehab after his stroke, um, he needed two caregivers to come and help him get out of bed. So the fact that he can get out of bed by himself independently means that he will get out of bed by himself more often than if he's waiting for someone. 
and it cuts the load on the caregiver who again we're worried about a back injury we're worried about someone heaving this gentleman up and trying to get him up and around and uh, and you know it, there's two ways you can get a back injury. One is if you're if someone is falling and you try to catch them, and and that's probably the most acute way. You're gonna there's a really good chance you're gonna going to get an injury instantly. The other way is over repeated um, bending and twisting and awkward postures that we often ask uh, caregivers to work in, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But this, you know, these, these poles, so this pole is one that's designed more for an institutional environment. We develop this as the alternative if there isn't a ceiling that you can push against with the other poles. This one bolts to the, a track in the wall. But both of them are available now. And this gentleman, as he's transitioning home, was telling me he's already ordered the set of poles for his house so he can put them wherever he needs them. For a lot of people, putting a pole next to the toilet is all you need. Sometimes just getting on and off the toilet can be a big challenge. One beside the bed, one next to the toilet if you're starting to get a little bit of arthritis in your knees and hips. Uh, my mom benefits a lot from having one pole right next to the, uh, right next to the toilet use it every day. Uh, another thing you can do though is to raise the height of the toilet. So there's two products that allow you to do that. One is by putting something on top of the toilet to raise it up about three or four inches. And there's about 50 different versions of that product. And then there's a product we developed which goes under the toilet. The only one I know of that goes under the toilet. Um, and I don't need to tell you why that's better. You can go on Amazon and read the reviews. <laughs> and, and you can see it's you know, um, 10 stars. I wish there was, uh, there were more than five stars to give for this product. I've gone through five other styles of toilet seats and was not ha happy with any of them. I like, uh, it was embarrassing to have guests to have, uh, to have to use these readjustable toilet seats. Um, another miracle device. You know, these are, it's a really, really simple idea, but, um, but that's an example of the type of products we're trying to come up with. Let's talk more about the back injury issue. So uh, a big part of our work here is thinking about not only the unpaid caregiver, but also the formal or, or you know, paid caregivers, personal support workers, who if you're lucky, um, you know, if Louise is lucky, she would have someone like this come in for an hour a day to do some of the heaviest care activities, bathing, toileting. And is, so we had a PhD student, Emily, do, um, Emily King, who brought some of these personal support workers in and some patient actors into Home Lab, which is one of the laboratories you'll see if you come uh, for a tour after. Um, she had them come in and go through the motions of what some of these care activities would be with patient actors. And what you see right away is the extremely awkward postures that people have to get into when they're doing these activities. You're bent and twisted in really awkward ways, and it's really no surprise that we see a huge risk of back injuries with folks like this. Um, so we've been developing a product called Posture Coach that is something you wear. You have two little sensors and it gives you a little vibration if you bend the wrong way. And so this is something, again, that's not on the market yet. We're, we're really excited about where it's going, the potential for it. Um, the idea is, it, uh, so far what we've done is we've shown uh, Muhammad, this is some of Muhammad's data collection, and um, he's, he's uh, shown now that you can wear this device for roughly, uh, for two days, for about an hour a day, going through some sort of um, patient care activities, lifting and moving people. Um, and at the end of those two days, you will have shifted your behavior to using safer patterns of movement so that you're not flexing your spine as much and your risk of back injury goes down dramatically. So we're thinking that this is beneficial for both the family, you know, the family caregiver who's suddenly thrown into this role of having to lift and move people, uh, a really simple tool that they can use for a little while to get better at moving people, um, as well as personal support workers um, that, that we know uh, may need this as well. Um, let's talk about bed sores. So if you're someone who doesn't move very much, then you could be at, ris you could be at risk of a bed sore. Um, you, uh, this is actually a project that's, uh, that's funded through the foundation by the Hallisey family. I know Andrew's here today, Andrew Hallisey. Um, and uh, so she, it's really, this project is led by Dr. Sharon Gabison, who's also here today. She's the Hallisey Fellow right now. Um, and the goal of this project is to create a prompting system to help caregivers know when a someone needs to be repositioned. We all, if, if you're relatively healthy and have reasonable mobility, 
we reposition ourselves all the time without even thinking. Even as you're sitting there, you'll shift a little bit and move around. And your tissues that are compressed from time to time have a chance to uh, have blood reperfuse and oxygen gets back to those tissues. For someone who, for whatever reason, doesn't move as much, um, you'll, they uh, their tissues don't have that option for the oxygen to get back into them. And over if they're left in the same position for too long, little parts of the tissue will die, causing a bed sore. Um, so we've developed a system now that we can show uh, with, with four, little, four little sensors that go under the bed legs um, that can detect whether you're on your back, your left side, or your right side with 94% accuracy. So the next step is now to build a prompting system that maybe goes to your, uh, that, that sends a text message to your smartphone when the person hasn't moved on their own but needs to be repositioned. In hospitals, what we do is we basically make people, um, we, we make people uh, reposition people every two hours is the, is the clinical standard. But there's actually not a clear way of knowing whether the person needed to be repositioned if they had already repositioned themselves as many people do regularly. So the idea is, again, unload the caregiver so that only when they're needed do they get called to do that. Um, and Gary, is uh, he's our um, hardware expert who's here in the room today, and he's going to be one of your tour guides for anyone who wants to, uh, to go on the tour after the fact, so he can answer a lot of your questions about that project if you want. And let's talk about winter. So, uh, you know, what sort of tools do we give people to get out of the house? You know, if you think about someone with a mobility challenge, a balance problem, um, you know, that someone's using a walker or a, a cane or something, how well is that thing going to work for them when they're trying to get around? I think maybe you share the concern that I don't feel particularly good about this person being out in the snow like this. Um, it's also a big challenge for personal support workers who have to come to people's homes to provide care. They have to, we think they might be some of the people who are at most risk actually of slipping and falling because the people they're caring for don't always have the ability to keep their walkways safe. Um, wouldn't it be great if just like our winter tires had a little symbol on them that told us that they'd been tested for performance on, in these conditions. Wouldn't it be great if our footwear also had that, had that um, label? So that's what our team has been working on for about three or four years now in Winter Lab, which is one of the other labs you'll see on the tour here. Um, we ask people to walk up and down an icy slope inside Winter Lab. So this is an ice floor here, about six meters long. And you have people wear different footwear walking up and down this lab that we can tilt to different angles. The angle, and we can rate the footwear based on the angle that you can tilt it to. So before I show you how that testing works, I'll, here's the quiz portion of my presentation. Go ahead and pick the footwear that you might select if you had a choice. Um, that, that, um, to buy if you were in a store. You know, if you're like me, you would have picked up the shoes and looked at the soles, and that's what you'd see. So uh, who would pick A? Show of hands. B? Okay, that's most people, I think. C? A few people. And D? Oh. <laughs> a few people. Okay, so, so some people have seen this presentation before. So uh, <laughs> here's... Here's what our testing looks like. So here's Jeff Fernie, by the way, is the gentleman you see walking back and forth here who is uh, who's the former institute director. You can see wearing a given pair of shoes um, on what we call a wet ice surface. He's able to walk up maybe a one or two degree incline with this first pair of boots, right? Let's switch that now to another pair of boots and see how much better they can do. The point is, we've in, in our testing, what we find is there's a really wide variation in the performance of different boots that you get, um, that you can buy. So the, the first one, remember, was only able to walk up about a 2 degree incline, and this one's going to be able to do a 20 degree incline on the same surface, on a wet ice surface. And, you're, and many of you will be surprised to learn which one that was. The one that doesn't look like it has any tread is actually the one that performs the best. And most people probably pick the, this one, B, because it has little flecks of yellow paint. And, and ma footwear manufacturers have gotten really good at figuring out how to manipulate us into buying footwear that they put yellow paint on, even though the same, roughly the same tread pattern here without the yellow paint works better. So this, all the information we get from this testing is available on our, on our website, ratemytreads.com. You can go there and find out the ratings for footwear. And this is the MAA score, which is literally the angle at which you, uh, that the boot starts to slip. 
Um, and so a 10 degree angle, we, we call our cutoff at seven degrees is a reasonable performance. Uh, and so now we have some, I understand now we have a few boots that achieve two snowflakes, which means they, so out of a three snowflake rating are able to do two snowflakes. I think that means they achieve more than 11 degrees. Um, and so we've got a few that are, that are doing better. What's really interesting is this, um, this testing program has shifted the footwear industry because companies are finding based on our ratings people are buying the footwear preferentially that we are rating as the best and it's making manufacturers produce this type of footwear. Uh, I know you're interested, what is it about this boot that makes it work so well? So it is part of a new generation of footwear that uses uh, special materials, composite materials. Um, these are two, uh, two of our postdocs that dug into this material. When we got this prototype boot and we looked at it, we were so surprised by its performance. We looked at it under an electron microscope and you see little glass fibers that are embedded inside there that make it work that way. The, the shoes I'm wearing right now use that technology as well, Vibram. Um, uses this technology um, and it it really has shown that it performs much much better than the majority of footwear out there so the our testing is basically showing that you can't tell by looking at a boot how well it's going to perform you need to actually test it so it's great that this footwear works well in the in the lab but what does that mean for slip and fall risk in the field we just did a, we did a study last winter, January and February, with 100 personal support workers. 50 of them we gave some of the best footwear that we'd tested. 50 of them wore their own footwear. And we were shocked at the difference in the risk of slips, the number of slips the control group reported versus the group that we gave footwear, and the risk of falls for the group that had their own footwear versus the ones that we gave footwear. It was a huge difference in the risk of falls. So we think there's a five-fold reduction in fall risk for people that, have their, um, that, that wear some of this footwear. Um, and so we're really excited about that. We're trying to spread the message on this. Um, it's really important for people who are particularly at risk and older that, uh, that they wear safe footwear and for the caregivers that are walking, you know, try, if you're trying to walk someone with a balance uh, the, whose balance is compromised, it's really important for you to have good footwear as well. So that's it, I'll end there, thanks very much.